Good day, folks. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, once again. Uh, today, I'm at the Chinkuzi Park here with uh, Shweb Ahmed and his uh, new venture that he started as uh, Scooty. So, uh, it's a very interesting journey, him as an immigrant uh, that we'll get to know about. So, without wasting any more time, let's just get started with this interview. Yeah, so, thank you so much, uh, Shweb, for uh, taking the time out today. Can you get started by telling us a little bit about yourself first? So, I came to Canada in November 1999 uh, as an international student. Uh, just like uh, a lot of people in our community, I came to study engineering uh, at McMaster University and that journey did not uh, was a very uh, uncomfortable and uh, very difficult journey where I did not make it through um, and I tried hard I tried uh, a lot uh, in in surviving the engineering journey but clearly life had other plans and it did not work out so from Ryers from McMaster I switched to Ryerson University and, uh, and I started taking night school and during the day I would take courses, sorry, during the evening I would take courses and during the day I would work. And so one of the first places I worked was Future Shop, which no longer exists, it is now Best Buy. And so we, you know, I would uh, go to work in the morning and go to class at the night and then we'd go home. And it was, it was a very, very interesting uh, journey, I guess, you know, as they say, uh, 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 growth is never linear. <laughs> It's a bit of an interesting, crazy wave. And um, got into Ryerson, then started working at Ryerson. I got very engaged in the university. I started volunteering my time there. Uh, I wanted to learn different skill sets. I wanted to get out of the engineering space. Uh, although I appreciated the profession, but I realized very, you know, after some time that it wasn't for me. And I started to grow based on the community that Ryerson provided. And it was a phenomenal experience. And I, you know, I learned so much during my time there. And, and then eventually I ended up working there as well, uh, very closely with the president of the university, got into the board, university's board. Um, and it was a very proud moment for me, for my family. I mean, came to Canada, started, you know, to start engineering, may have become an engineer, but clearly life had other plans. Interesting. So then you went on to do your MBA and then how did Scooty come about? So I, I did my MBA as well at Ryerson with, uh, with Saad Bhai here and it was uh, a phenomenal experience at Ted Rogers School of Management's MBA program is one of Canada's best and we learned a lot in that program. Uh, one of the great things about the, the program was it trained you how to think outside the box and really you know actually what that outside the box means. So uh, and look for opportunities. Opportunities are everywhere and the, the world is a big place. Uh, so from work, I had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. And when I was in D.C. on my very last day, I wanted to check out the Smithsonian Museum. And I wanted to go uh, to the Science Museum and I wanted to go to the, the African American Museum. Uh, specifically, I wanted to see the Obama portraits. I had heard so much about it, I wanted to see it. Didn't have a lot of time. Uh, and in central D.C., there's a lot of one-way streets because of security, secret service. So the quickest and the most economical way to get around was through a scooter. So I saw one on the street, instructions are fairly clear, download the app, yada, 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 scanned the barcode, and I was on my way. I don't know if you've been to downtown DC, but I did three museums in about two and a half hours. If you're going to the Smithsonian Museum, you're spending about half a day there. Now granted, I knew what I was looking for, but I was in and out, in and out, in and out. And then I thought to myself, well, I have just w uh, not only saved time and money using a very uh, interesting looking device, which is not too uh, different from an intuitive standpoint using a bicycle. Why can we bring this to Canada? Then I started digging more, digging more, just general hobbyist research, just digging, digging, digging and said, OK, maybe this could work. Maybe it's good. So let's give it a shot. Came up with the name Scooty. I had my reasons, you know, I wanted something that was, that many people could say uh, from people from different backgrounds, it would roll off the tongue quite easily. Uh, every time I would leave my house around 7, 7, 38 in the morning, I would always pass by a school bus. And something about a school bus just intrigued me, I didn't know what it was. And then I realized it was the colors. It was safety orange and black. And I'm like, I could see a school bus from a, from a distance. That should be the colors and the branding of Scooty. You have to be able to see this coming from a distance. So we picked our colors. Then we started figuring out, well, how do you get this device? Who are the suppliers? What are the regulations? What is a regulation? What does that even mean? 
Start to understand that story. Start to piece different kinds of story. It was as if I opened up a box with a thousand pieces of a puzzle. And and there was no picture. You know how the, you get a picture? This is what you're supposed to picture should look like. And you piece the puzzles together. The only picture I had was I want that scooter in Canada. That was it. And it was, a, it was like giving me a big piece of the picture but a corner of that picture. And that corner was that scooter. Then start talking to people, start to understand how this thing works. And start to learn a lot about myself. My own insecurities, my own biases, my own questions, my own thoughts. And I start to get a lot of opposition about this product. Don't do scooters. It's too expensive. Uh, you can't compete against the, the Google and, the, and whoever, the big gigantic investors. You can't compete against the Goliaths. You know, these stories over and over again. It's sort of, of course, you know, as a human being, it does affect your confidence. But then I'm like, screw it. Let's just give it a shot. Start to build a team. So I went to my closest confidence, my family, my cousin. Went to him and I said, look, let's give this a shot. Here's what I'm thinking. He goes, okay, let's try it. Doesn't hurt to try it. And then I started getting in touch with people that I knew. And I started sharing my story as to why I wanted to do this. My story has evolved as to why I wanted to do this from last year to now it has gone through my various you know something from engineering permutations and combinations of a story and now here we are um, we've we decide we learned very quickly from a regulatory standpoint you need to understand policy the only time I've heard of policy when I when I was when I went to go return something at Walmart or one of those stores hey what's your return policy 30 days and so on. I'm like what the heck is policy I actually was working in policy at the time as well, so I said, okay, how do, you, how do you connect public policy into transportation policy? And how are, they, how are those worlds, how do they interact? So I started to understand what that transportation policy is, and I said, look, this is not my area, so let me grow the team and bring in someone that understands policy. So I found uh, Moaz Ahmed, who's on my team, he's our policy lead. Uh, and then started to get in touch with the supplier. And that was one of the most difficult things to do. You're dealing with time zone differences. You're dealing with the language barrier. And you're dealing with uh, this uncertainty of whether your product is going to work. That too, couple that with very, very limited amount of funding available. And these are very capital intensive uh, products. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's put that in the parking lot, we'll come back to that. Then start to develop a website. How do you write a website? I'm not a technical person. I'm not a programmer. So I started looking up, how do you do a website? Oh, there's something called Wix, W-I-X. Very cool, what is it? It's very simple, it's very intuitive. So I myself built that website. If you go to ridescooty.com, I built that. The branding, the messaging, I pulled in my, my wife, who's a brilliant marketer, and she's actually uh, excellent when it comes to uh, the language. She has a very good command of the English language, so she helped me with the, the messaging of Scooty, creating the culture of Scooty. And then I started talking to the students that I was involved with at Ryerson. We have Edmund Sofo who's joined our team, an incredible business development person. We have a very, very talented uh, marketing person named Simran Gill, also a Ryerson student. So we started to, as the story grew, people got excited and then they wanted to become a part of the story. Amazing, amazing. This is really nice. Uh, one thing, um, uh, Shreve, I wanted to ask you, as an immigrant, people don't normally think about um, entrepreneurship. Yes. One, I want to have your thoughts about that. And the other one is, uh, what advice would you give to folks who are just uh, migrating out or coming into Canada now? I would say, uh, by default, immigrants are entrepreneurs. They're trying. They come. They one. They're discovering a new country. They may have some, you know, lines of communication or contacts here. They're they're taking very scarce, scarce generally speaking very scarce personal resources that they have and they're trying to build something out of it so you again that's the quality of an entrepreneur uh, you come here and you take a risk unfamiliar territory food family culture uh, taking care of growing your family their safety their security again that's a risk also a checkbox on the quality of entrepreneur um, you try to learn a system you try to learn a culture you try to learn the rules and regulations also a checkbox of an entrepreneur so uh, so by default an immigrant is an entrepreneur and entrepreneurship does not necessarily mean that you have to start a business entrepreneurship means you're taking resources that you have and you're building something out of it and it could be as simple as taking care growing and building your family Interesting. Uh, any last piece of advice for the immigrants never give up never give up
Okay. Never give up. That. Never give up. Yeah. Okay, a lot of people say that. Very good point. Never give up, but continue to pursue. Persevere. If something, if, you know, we've heard this many times. If one door closes, another door opens. If none of those door opens, break it down. <laughs> right? You. The other thing is, you know, some people, some people say, oh, you know, uh, we need a seat on the table. If there's no seat on the table, and if there's, if there's no seat on the table, if there's no table, go build one. This is a table. Scooty is yeah. a table. We built it, and we pulled in other seats on our table. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Wim, for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.